right, I wish you a very good morning. Eid Mubarak, who is still celebrating the holiday. And for those in Lagos, other parts of Nigeria, the holiday will be ending today. Those in Katsina, I hear they gave you Friday too. Uh-uh, you guys are enjoying. <laughs> okay, the best of the season. We've prayed and prayed. It's time to believe and work for the best Nigeria can ever offer all of us. Welcome, I'm Cordelia Obe, and we'll be looking at the front page uh, stories this morning. We'll be reviewing some of them. My analysts will be joining me today. Rufayo Seni and Ejiro Mukoro, both of them will be joining today to analyze some of the stories. But before we go on, my quote for the day, and it's taken from the Holy Book, that prayer without works is dead. Just like faith without work also is dead. Now, who is praying? And what prayer is not doing anything? <laughs> Why? When we listen, we will know as prayers are making the headlines this morning. But it's not the kind of prayer that they send to email addresses, so not that one. The real one that they kneel down to do. Let's start with the Vanguard. And the Vanguard has this one. The major headline for the Vanguard today is Tariff Hike. 20 hours supply for Band A customers under threat. Riders, as park allocation hovers at 3,236 megawatts. PH Discos apologizes for shortfall. Kaduna Disco sets up response teams. No transparency, fairness in Berlin, CPPE. Firms will pay for the services they don't enjoy. LCCI, Expert expects improvement in supply they're saying we don't they don't even have enough power to be asking people to pay that they'll get 20 hours who is actually getting 20 hours right now well maybe some people are congratulations to them we have above the mass transfer of pension money out of nigeria escalates hmm. inquiry okwama community shuns military panel okoloba in attendance PDP neck meeting, governors, others renew battle for parties. So, FECOT, EPIS chair, Onyema, slams foreign airlines over conspiracy. And talking about this, it's been rather weird. People say, expect this, it happens. People are saying, no, this is not right. But later on, on VOP, we'll be having Sydney foster she'll be joining us cindy foster will be joining us from the uk and we're looking at this issue she consults for airpiece too and she's an aviation analyst we'll talk about this matter later on edel victory our security improving fg declares was looking at vanguard so more stories from here we have pictures from Eid and other stories here um edo guba my impeachment won't stand shaib Shaibu, I wonder the uh, mind is using to say this. Maybe he has something up his sleeves. Alleged defamation. Better I do threatens to sue BBC. No cause for alarm on next Olui Badon, Makinde says. And Wadume wants Nigeria over... Sorry, <laughs> it's not Wadume. Valdrum wants Nigeria over Olympic preparations. Maybe I'm thinking of Wadume too much. And there are other stories you could catch up and pick up the vanguard to read. The Punch, their major headline, Idel Victory, Defend Nigeria, Support Leaders, Tinubu Buhari Urge Citizens and the Riders, Let's Protect Nigeria's Integrity, Tinubu Appeals to Nigerians, Support for Leaders, A Vote for Better Tomorrow, says Buhari, and the uh, above the mass uh, headlines are as follows. Electricity tariff, FG plans 1.5 trillion naira savings, 2.5 million meter installations. Fresh borrowings may push Nigeria's debt to 111 trillion naira. Hmm. Cash crunch hits CCB state offices, asset verifications face hurdles. NAFDAQ orders recall of toxic cough syrup. Ondo and Mutekum naps 14 suspected kidnappers, 31 others. Olubadon designates health. Ladoja falls Otumbalogu. Makinde says no crisis. 
Let's move over now to the Nation newspaper where we have this one big, big headline, and it's from Dangote, who says, Our diesel price cuts driving down inflation. Mm. Entrepreneurs should work with the government. Abiodun, economy on recovery path. And I remember that yesterday, uh, some dealers said they were going to see Dangote to say the amount you're giving is a bit too much for something that has been made in nigeria talking about the diesel we also have the idel victory stories and here yeah, this one is a tragic one lagos monarch ex-governor's son die after prayer two flung into lagoon in third mainland bridge crash three die in lagos ibadan highway accident very sad we also have the story on the Olu, Olu Badon and Makinde, what he's saying. Uh, no need to run through that again because we've already taken that. And Tinubu urges Nigerians, believe in our government. Ryder, President, Vice President, Sultan, others observe Eid prayers. And the major thing, they're asking for us to pray for our leaders. We should pray for Nigeria and pray for our leaders. I'll talk about this prayer later on, but first, let's look at The Guardian. The Guardian says, major headlines, NSAS Pro Panel Report, victims await 1.7 billion naira compensation from 25 states three years after. Hmm. All right. Tragic Salah, monarch dies, reckless driver flings two passengers into Lagos Lagoon. That one happened yesterday. It was avoidable. Overspeeding was part of that problem. And really, we don't even know much about the two flung into the lagoon, a male and a female. Uh, no feedback yet as per whether they found them alive or not. But people said they saw the man swimming, trying to swim out. And uh, the police, they were doing their bit. All right. Malabu case, EFCC dismisses compromise allegation, considers appeal. Price of goods not reducing amid Naira appreciation. This is according to the Accord Party. And they're telling the federal government. We refuse to move on. 91 Chibo girls' parents tell Tinubu's wife. Seek intervention. At Salah, Tinubu Buhari, others seek resilience, support, peace, unity. EFCC's fresh charge links a mefele to Lagos firms. Pilgrims or Pilgrims Palliative between personal, religious right, and misplaced priority, misplaced state priority. This is a news analysis you could read up also in The Guardian. Finally, Forex crisis, poor infrastructure, depressed healthcare sector earnings. Hmm. Read more. And we have other papers here. We also have... Uh, uh, the daily the daily times i'll take this one last before i bring you one or two things and then we'll join our analysts above the mast we have this one from the daily times kaduna's huge debts pdp calls for probe of ex-governor el rufai kogi bandits attacks we have arrested some suspects salah sultan urges muslims to seek knowledge and pray for leaders okwama killings Military Board of Inquiry commences sitting in Wari, and as you heard earlier, people from the Okwama community, they refused to or didn't attend, but Okoloba, they came in their full force. Tinubu to Nigerians, remain patriotic, love, defend Nigeria's integrity, says renewed hope agenda being diligently implemented. And we also have this one for the Eid, and we have... Um, ACF expresses worry over deteriorating standard of living, calls for more effective policy response. And finally, there will be no room for criminal-minded travelers, NRSCG says. All right, let's see. One or two we can take a, a full swipe at before we have our analysts join us to talk. We also have the punch has this story inside. Kanu's lawyers allege access denier threatening to boycott trial. And I wonder why that matter has been dragged like that. 
Now, this one about defending Nigeria support leaders, Tinubu, Buhari, urging citizens, and they're saying that we should pray. This was after the Eid prayers. Tinubu had his own at the Dodan Barracks in Ikoi, Lagos. He observed his prayers there, and he now spoke that the kind of resilience, sacrifice, endurance that we have, we should preserve that for the country. Be a kind and cheerful giver. Love our country better than any other country. That's the only one that we have. And he talks about us protecting our uh, integrity. And he talked about the fact that the hope, the hope is there. We should have it all. Because if we don't have hope, it's as good as nothing at all. So we should continue to have hope that things definitely will get better. And the renewed hope is not bad at all. That's from the punch. Also in the punch, you get to hear Omai responding to Atiku Abubakar. It says that the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway costs 4 billion naira per kilometer. 4 billion naira per kilometer, that is what he said. And he tried to explain how the work will be, how many meters, the shoulders, the, the shoulders for the road and all that. And it is not, as Atiku has said, that it's 8 billion naira per kilometer. No, it is 4 billion naira. That means at the end of the day, the completed cost for that project, the total project will be completed at 2.8 trillion naira. Hmm. Okay, we move on. Also from The Guardian, we have some of the stories. Uh, we have this one from Ekiti, where uh, the governor appointed 110 new aides. You had essays on entertainment, on Hausa, on Urubu, and others. And this is said to be the first batch. 110 new aides. Wow. Well, um, maybe 110 and your name not the inside. Uh, <laughs> then the story on the accident on the third mainland bridge where the reckless driver flung two passengers and it had to do with overspeeding and the fact that the thing was a bit too much the guy rammed into the side and flung those people into the lagoon and we also had the sad report yesterday that after prayers a lagos monarch one of the most powerful in lagos obakabiru akpabiaka the osolo of his solo passed on some few hours after eight prayers and so far he has been buried according to muslim rights may his soul rest in peace okay i have both of them on the line now ejiro mukoro and my man rufai useni good morning guys hello okay we'll try and get the volume working can we hear them now good morning Okay, we're going to work on, on that and get the volume up. And uh, once it works, we'll, we'll go ahead. You keep me updated about that. All right, we have uh, this one. Tariff hike, 20 hours supply for Band A customers on the threat. That one we had looked at. And the fact that the capacity, the electricity supply that the discos themselves are, re are receiving are not as should be. And so we shouldn't expect as much power. Uh, as, before they okay. are speaking of gold, too, <laughs> okay. so I know I, I'm going to be sold you, out of gold. You guys, so. are, you guys are just in <laughs> without me. How come? Why? <laughs> Good morning. I, I think they're ready for us. I, I think I can hear. I, you can hear me. Yes, yes, you can hear me. Good morning. How are you? Hello. Hello. How are no, you? The volume is low. Though. The volume yeah, is the low. Yeah, the volume is quite low. Okay, but can you hear me better now? It's still too low. It's yeah, still very too low. low. Okay. Um, let's just send them a message and see. Okay, okay. L let's find a solution. Okay, let, let's uh, move on. I'll try and connect them also uh way here and uh, the papers were getting that set for us to have uh analysts join us okay you're trying to get them back all right so let's move on while they're getting them back we have this one too where uh the paper daily trust is here and one of the stories that we have here the 
military board of inquiry that has started sitting in Okwama community about the killings of the 17 military guys and the fact that the community Okwama says we can't come we're in the bush good morning can you hear me better can you guys hear me better now hello okay maybe we will try from another point uh sorry there's a little techie thing going on here we're going to sort it out and then we'll have um my two guys join me all right let's do this let me try it from my own bit all right you're listening to vop 903.7 fm and we're here good morning <laughs> Okay, Ejiro, you just hold on there. I have her here. Uh, she'll just hold on a bit while we get this working. Okay. Okay, once this one uh, settles in, we can move on with this one. Okay, we have this other story from this part where we were talking about the Okwama community and they've been meeting at the Delta State Governor's Office Annex in Warisa local government area. And when the meeting started, instead of 2 p.m., it eventually kicked off at 3.45. Hello? Hello? I can hear you. I can hear you. But you're right. low, but I can hear you. Okay, thank God for that. Rufai, is Rufai there? Hello, Rufai? Okay, Joe, let, let's carry on. You, you've heard some of the stories. Let's move on. And you can start while we wait for Rufai. Which one would you like to react to first? I give the opportunity to pick your story. Okay, so th there are two big ones that I, I love so much. The Air Peace Recognition at Gatwick, um, oh, the announcement that's made true. by... Because that was a big deal, and that just shows that Nigerians should never ever give up on their inherent power. Like, we have so much power as a people. We are over 200 million people in the world, right? Mm. And and if you now merge it together with other people around the world, not just only in Nigeria, it shows that when we take ownership of our, of our, of our own worthiness, of our own significance, of our contribution, of our right to be treated with dignity, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is you will make the person who continues to be an oppressor. Nigerians must never forget that we're still living in a system where to oppress Nigeria and Africa by extension is always will be a policy hidden agenda of foreign bodies mm -hmm. and foreign countries and organizations. Yeah. Especially those who have a history of invaders who came into our country to rape, to plunder, to dehumanize and deny us our fundamental rights. Mm. We must understand that that psyche hasn't gone yet. They implanted it structurally speaking, even in our civil service, the way it operates, the psyche of how the operations of the civil service still exist today is also an offshoot of that mentality of those who came here in this country and invaded us. All so right. we must understand that we have to break that chain. And the only way to break that chain is to make sure that nobody dehumanizes you nobody treats you as a second class citizen nobody talks down on you nobody disrespects you because for goodness sake it's our money hard earned money I that we're paying to them that drives the economy all right uh, they, they've already on the line through now. the transatlantic slave who created the system we have all right yes uh, Rufai, you're there morning. Good morning. yes sir okay so your own yeah, big morning. story morning. You, morning. How's mm. good? How are you very well thank you sorry about the glitch all right carry on your own big story this morning hello hello can you hear me yes i can hear you now go ahead can you hear me i can hear you go ahead so my own is an so my own is an inquisition uh 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 What's it called? Minister of Work, Mr. Dave Mai, says that he's going to release the project cost, you know, based on this cost our own project. And we are waiting, say, between the 10th and the 12th. What I want is an empirical breakdown of how much the project will cost per kilometer 
and why would the project culminate into trillions for mm. 47 kilometers of road? Secondly, what I will want is also to a tender list at which they put up a tender for this project and made businesses bid for it. What was the due process like? If you remember my very good uh, big sister, So what is the due process followed for this coastal road project? Yeah. Second, uh, thirdly, easier to the upgrade and transfer kind of thing. What is the cost benefit ratio on the economy? Don't just tell me, oh, it's going to open up the economy. Give me the numbers as regards how much is going to feed back into the economy. Because we hear this talk a lot of the time. Take, for instance, when the first did the rail line that we asked question. They said the justification for it was it was going to open up the economy. But a couple of years, close to five years down the line, we have not seen that money permeate into the economy. Give me the cost-benefit ratio of how that money is going to come back into the economy. And now there's going to be a sustainability of this over a long-run period of time. Mm. I mean, those are the key questions we also want to see. Uh, Rufan, can you hear gets, me? Um, uh, you know, what he's going to say. So we are waiting for his press conference. Yeah, you know, yes, he, he said something that uh, instead of the eight bill, uh, eight billion that uh, Atiku said for a kilometer, that it's going to be um, four billion, four billion, and he tried to give a particular breakdown. And we're still wondering, a kilometer, four billion, is that not still a lot? No, we are saying. I asked a question that is different from what it gave. Mm-hmm. Empirical cost per kilometer of the project. That's just because at first you must be able to graduate a cost per kilometer. That's what they normally do. That's just like how we did rail line that we didn't know the cost per kilometer. I asked the former minister, my very good friend, Mr. Machi, that question. Mm. We don't have the empirical numbers. The cost part of the conversation into how much comes down to and the variations. What would be the cost of these bridges and all of that? So we want an empirical breakdown. You should also give us a tender. Where were the cost bid for the project? Why was high tech the preferred bidder? Why is it being given to high tech? So there's a lot more that we need to know about that project. Why is it given to high tech? Why was it the preferred bidder? Okay, uh, then maybe for me, let, let's uh, come to my own story that I think we should look at. And that should be the one of Okwama. The sitting had started, but the Okwama community, they didn't show. Okoloba community, they came. And the whole thing, one is wondering, will it be complete? Should only the military, as you asked um, Rufai yesterday, should it be just the military? Because the person who had welcomed them from the state government said, we are not permitted to be a part of it. So how do we get the clear picture of what really happened when the aggrieved party is the one carrying out the investing, I mean, would, the panel? Would, 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 you respect, would you respect, yes, I told you that that city was going to be a nullity and I've yeah. been proven right. It's best you call me a prophet or a soothsayer. You cannot prophets. expect a community to show in a sitting, yeah, in a sitting that is not independent. You need an independent, but it's not the military. It's not the, the perpetrators of chaos that will not be a judge in their own matter. The military does not have a right to go and sit down there and say they are going to call community and start asking them. Well, no, it is an independent body that will also call the military as a participant and the community. That's when they will come. And I think it has to be crystal clear. UPU has given their stance on this. The military now wants to call for a point of inquiry where most people are still being arrested. Chaos has, has been done. It's not going to be fair. It's just like after what happened in NSAS, you are not telling the military to come and lead a panel of inquiry what happened. No! That's why you saw that there was an independent panel of inquiry led by Justice Doris Okuobi by the state, and there were many key sector participants in it. And the military was just even called to come and answer question. So the military too should be called to come and answer question mm. and be invited to that independent. So what the military is doing there is not it cannot hold what I'm not surprised the committee is not there. You mm. can't pee on people's back and you tell them it's raining. It's not done. Hey, 
And yes, on that conversation, I was very happy that they they took that decision because when people do not give you your dignity, when people do not recognize your significance in a conversation where, one, you were manhandled and treated with a threat to your own life as well, especially for the innocent people who knew nothing about what happened at that, um, the incident that regards to the killings of these uh, uh, military officers. So, one, you want to replay a situation that smirked off what we remember of the UD and similar incidents. You come to a place, an incident happened, rather than you with the intelligence you're supposed to have at hand because it was pre arranged. It wasn't as if these people came out of the blues. This was a pre arranged peacekeeping mission, if that was indeed the objective. Now you came in, you, you were about to leave. There are inconsistencies about even how your guns got to you or how they were, you were even, um, the guns were taken away, rather, were taken away from you. And unfortunately, the dastardly act was taken and affected it. So to the police again, we say our sincere uh, condolences. Okay, sincere condolences. I think that was what uh, was being said uh, there by Jiro before the line is a network now. That's and in houses. This. How do you burn houses? How do you burn houses of people you identified who committed, uh, who committed a crime and then you go about on a rampage into communities and you're burning houses and shooting and no 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 it's not done so when you carry that kind of step in the first instance as your first reaction as your first response trust is broken and once there's trust broken you've got a problem not to mention the people are already living in forest the, the situation is so bad they can barely eat in their own community where they have, have no idea of what even supposedly happened so independent inquiry and a panel to this conversation is the way to go. And if the federal government is really serious about ensuring that, one, there is proper conflict resolution strategies put in place, that the human lives of every Nigerian matter be a conversation that is a two-way street where there is feedback, everybody is in has to be transparency in this conversation. You cannot court martial where you now put everybody out of Okay. This is a public matter now. It's a human rights conversation, so it should be out there in the public. There right. should be no hidden agenda in this matter. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, now, let's. Uh, I'll give you two stories. You pick any of the ones you want. You know, all the Eid messages and all that the president said, pray for Nigeria, pray for our leaders. Uh, let's continue to be patriotic to the country. And the renewed the hope is in progress as in, and is intact also don't give up on nigeria and there's also the story kanu's lawyers are alleging access denial they threaten to boycott the trial and they said every time they go to the uh place where he is the dss will seize the legal documents that they need to prepare him for the trial with it's supposed to be april 17 2024 but the way they are being treated uh his lawyer jimako is saying that uh, access has been denied by the DSS, and if care is not taken, they may just withdraw. Now, the paper that reported this said they tried to reach um, the DSS via its own uh, spokesperson and so on, but they couldn't because its line kept ringing busy, busy, busy. Any of these two stories? Uh, Rufai, which one? Ejira, I'll come to you after. Okay, I I'm going to even extend. I'm going to extend to also a general interest story that is going on okay and that was better i do challenging the bbc for carrying a story that all oh, the 30 billion they said that the fci recover was linked to her i'm not getting an exclusive for my intel this morning and uh and uh, the intel is saying now that uh better that efcc had cleared better but I'm taking this as somebody from an Intel from Hack team. So it's just a matter of announcement that is coming out soon. I'm taking that, you know, you know, with a pinch of salt. I heard but this some time it. back too, and I we'll and see I can't how. Find. Yeah, so we'll see how all of this pan out. I would like to ask questions about the EFCC, you know, and. <laughs> Let's see how it pans out. Yeah. That's just it. 
Uh, secondly, as regards uh, what a lot of people are saying on the professional side, uh, Nigeria, do well. Salah message, Easter, uh, Easter message. You see, politicians should stop all this platitude if they cannot do well themselves. <laughs> so, mm. so, if they cannot do well themselves, they should stop all this platitude. Yeah. So, if they cannot change their own ways, they should stop all of this. Because it is in changing their own ways that society will become a lot better. True. True. You cannot tell me that you pray for the grace of God every day, but your hands are not clean. It's not done. So please, they themselves should change their own ways and start to do positive for society because society can truly change. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, and I rest my kids there. Ejiro, you know yeah. that when they say pray for the nation or whatever, yeah. or pray for your leaders, uh, die by fire and a prayer too. Uh, God bless you on a prayer. So it's your choice to choose the prayer you want to pray. Abi. <laughs> all right, carry on with yours. And um, so I think there's something about the nature of us in Nigeria in particular, where we feel that prayers is actually the action needed to solve a problem. We also see prayer as a means to not take accountability. We see prayer as the go-to place of escape where we would hide behind so that people can forgive us for the ills and the crimes that we commit. Mm. And then we present ourselves with such piety, right? Such deference of humility so that you work on the perception and the psyche of people to deflect from the real issues at hand. The consciousness that we have as a people where prayer has been taken to a point where we use it to absorb ourselves, right, of taking the needed specific and directed actions that will make us become more responsible is something I have understood. And that is why we are where we are today. And that is why till tomorrow, it will always be used as a communication strategy by the politicians to douse the people because whether we like it or not, religion as it is in Nigeria, the way it's practiced, is like an opium, mm. a dopamine that is shoot into us by the languages that we use to excite to chill us, to give us escape, so that our mental environment does not affect us so badly. So it's an escape mechanism strategy, really, when you think about it. But this is where Nigerians should begin to wake up and say, you know what? God himself has blessed us with everything we need. We do not lack anything in this country. But the thing that we do not do is that we should not direct those prayers to say, I am going to take an action worthy of this. Nigeria as a space, leadership has been the traditional problem we have in driving this country to its destination. So if the leaders are expecting Nigerians to, one, be sacrificial, uh, you make, uh, uh, um, use made in Nigerian goods, drive on Nigerian roads, use Nigerian airspace, um, um, uh, and then expect that all that we provide in this country, the education and all of that should be used by Nigerians, then they should lead by example. Their children yeah. should not be studying abroad. They yeah. should be using our own traditional local indigenous motor um, uh, distribution companies, yeah. the likes of you know who. Yeah. Good. So, and then they should be eating Nigerian foods. The customs that are importing food, the custom fees that we they get, the levies that they get, the charges that they make till today, which should have dropped with the with the level of the um, a, a dollar from the one five it currently was, should have dropped by now. It hasn't dropped at the customs. They are still holding on to that. So, if you are going to be driving this conversation, then in the offices of the civil servants and the civil offices where they are responsible, from the permanent secretary to the 
directors to the commissioner in that particular ministry, mm -hmm. to the minister in that ministry, to the SSA that are overseeing those other responsibility giving direct communication to the presidency and everybody working in all of these various yeah. capacities. They must lead by example. Right, and Nigeria should say we are tired of this picture. Yes, of yes. Uh, presenting things to us as if we are, we are not thinking. Okay, we, we have to wrap this up now because you know so, uh, Rufai has to move on to <laughs> other things. So quickly, Rufai, uh, let's do five five seconds each. Your uh, eight. okay, Rufai has moved on. You know he has uh, other things this morning too, and you too. So I thank okay. you very much for your time. Wish you the best of the uh, rest of the holiday, and see you you Ejiro next week. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> So much could be like doing fun. Greetings to our people there. Or we hail on our from everywhere we are. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Greet people there too. You are listening to 903 FM, 90.3 FM here in Lagos. And we've just heard Ejiro Umukoro and Rufayo Seni giving us uh, in depth analysis of some of the things we've talked about so far. I'll start the messages from uh, YouTube. You can watch us live on YouTube, is at VOP 903 FM. FM. Uh, watch, add your comments and so on. And for the phone lines, 0700 903 903 903. You could also call on WhatsApp 0817 175 Ola Adewale, good morning to you. You say we'll never stop talking and telling leadership of their default. We'll not stop demanding what belongs to Nigerians from the looter maniacs, even though they call us foolish. Leaders need to re examine themselves over the affairs of the country called Nigeria. As he three years plus nigeria is still crawling not be juju be that i wonder emmanuel song nigerians just have to be careful while driving and observe speed limit some of these deaths are totally avoidable De frankie dixon those requesting citizens to pray for leaders should tell leaders to stop the looting and stealing of public funds and start using our resources for infrastructural development in and human capital development all right the conversation will continue there and we'll take you as a first call good morning hello good morning Please morning talk. welcome your name where are you calling from you can call it from Michelle all right good morning go ahead uh, yeah. An honest person, a truthful person is a truthful person. Mm. But a liar is a man with a very short memory. I want to remind APC what they told us when they came in. In Nigeria, there was no subsidy. That was one of the things they used against Jonathan. But today they are paying subsidy even when they remove. The money they are supposed to got from the subsidy the remover, they are supposed to use it to substitute for electric tariff. But today, they have removed everything. I want to ask, what is the benefit of the Nigerian citizen from any government, especially ABC government? They have done so much that Nigerians are beginning to feel so bad. It's very, very pathetic. And I want to ask, like I normally ask Mary, let me ask you, how can we get good government from our people? What method should we use? Because I remember with the one, I mean, uh, I wrote to me once said that why we are not getting dividends of democracy because we don't stone them. Are we supposed to be stoning them so that they can do the right thing? When they say that there was no subsidy in, in all those things, but today they will subsidy. What is the benefit of any government to our citizens? We are paying for everything. Water, light, roof, everything. It is so sad. APC mm. should just leave the country. They should leave Nigeria alone. We are tired of all these things. All right, your time is up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, Madam, and remain blessed you too. The president said Nigerians should support their leaders. To me, Nigerians don't have leaders but rulers. If we have leaders, they will take care of us. We have government that abandon its citizens to suffer untold hardship. We have a government that causes pain to its citizens. We have a government that can't provide ordinary water to its citizens or for its citizens. Government that cannot provide for its citizens, and we have government that cannot secure its citizens. What a shame! What government benjamin from shogunle 
and we we'll also have your message here remember the number is 0700 903 903 903 good morning hello hello yeah good morning good morning madam morning how are you fine thank you all right my name, name is peter Utifo. i'm calling from abanga nikoson all right peter you remember our deal right Civility yes, all through. Yes. All right, go ahead. You have thank you. Yeah. Remember all times, all these two. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I want to speak on the accord when they said that the Naira is appreciating, but uh, the the goods, the the part of goods are increasing. I also want to relate you to what uh, the president said that we should be hopeful. Yes. The two are very commendable. That is, they are called a statement, a, a core party statement and the uh, dollar net review statement that we should be hopeful. But it is to be noted that it is only somebody who is alive that should be hopeful. Somebody who is dead cannot be hopeful. It is also said by the bank that the inflation in Nigeria will come down to 24% before the end of this year. Why even CBN is saying it should be 21%? World Bank also went further to say that 2016, I mean 2026, that inflation will come down to about 15%. All these are good. But the prices of goods down are so high. The inflation of goods are so high. Up to 40% is not more than. So I'm appealing to the president that if you please open the border for now, even if it's for six months, and if possible, in this price, price control mechanism. Right. So that... Okay, uh, you have, uh, so I, that it's 90 seconds, sorry. Oh, okay. As if my, what do you call it, my, my phone now is obeying time by itself. All right. Thank you so much. I got your message there. Good morning, Cordelia. This is HRH, Israel Highness BC1 call from Oshodi. If they just restore power after two days of total blackout, only to take it back in a minute, please, Cordelia, what band can this be called? Um, Afro band. <laughs> good morning, sorry. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, my sister. Welcome. How was your night? Very fine. Oh, is, this, is this Pepe Dem? That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead. I better them with prayers. Amen. Amen. They are raping us. They are exploiting us. They are robbing us. Thank God for it. Do you remember early 2000 when this uh, GSM came? It was global on the rescue us. If you are not a billionaire, you cannot buy some cash. It was held, 80,000, 70,000, the lowest about 50,000. It's talking about body, economic, and MPS. It was global contact body to one naira. That was the end of all these produce. Before your call enter the next one second, you pay 50, 50 naira per minute. You pay 50 naira for that second. It was global contact rescue in Nigerian firm, and then Oga. Now, this time around, it is the AP, Onyama, that rescue us again. But look at what is happening now in the cable. If you recharge your cable now, travel to your village, come back after one month, that money is gone. Mm. Whether you watch, you do not watch, it is gone. Why not pay as you go? They say no. Because they are foreign friends. They are stopping us here. They are exploiting us. They are robbing us. Who will rescue us now from all this cable? They will go to the European League and get a very huge amount of sponsorship, airtime, television rights, about more than $4 billion. It is Nigeria that will take care of about 50, more than 60 percent of that uh, Nigerians here because they are exploiting us and nobody is talking for us. Nobody will. But we have investors in this country who will enter into that lucrative business. Every, before you are not a billionaire, you cannot be watching cable again because you, it is not thinkable. Okay, your Whether time you is up. Us, you will be the <laughs> okay, the time is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I have your message. And uh, he just talked about the cable thing. I just saw that the pricing has gone. Woo ah, now, wow. If only NTA will do what it's supposed to do, who will need cable? If NTA is doing what it's supposed to do, who will need cable? Eh? We're still, in fact, good morning. 
Hello. Good morning. Your name and where you're calling from, and please turn down the volume on your radio set. When you are calling us, we would appreciate that very much because the radio will interfere with what we're doing and it wouldn't sound well uh, or good at all. All right. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Your name and where are you calling from? This is so be calling from Ikeja. Sorry, please. Is this the Cordelia of uh, those days in uh, Radio Nigeria? Yeah, so it's Cordelia of nowadays. Hey, too. where you go, Cordelia? Where you go? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got tuned this one. I say Cordelia. Cordelia. I don't normally call in. I call in other, other <laughs> time. He, 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 he can do the other people. I didn't know when I had that. Let me ask. Wow. It's Welcome, me. my sister. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. You see, my sister, uh, Nigerian story, you know, they keep pushing us to the world. Increase, increase. Nobody. Well, anyway, when the uh, uh, kingdom of protesters and the propaganda are in power, there's nothing you can do. Uh, it's left for Nigerians to, you know, to take their destiny in their hands by fighting for themselves. They should not wait for an NLC. They should not wait for Serap and the family uh, file to file. Let them go out and file. Yes, let them keep remaining there and complain and lament every mm. day. Thank you very much, my sister. Thank you so much, and thank you for the warm welcome. That was sweet. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now I have your message here. I of Tech from Arena Market. Uh, good morning to you too. You say um, you're saying that prayer without work is dead, right? Where is security increasing in Nigeria? The man who bought this uh, dume upon himself cannot stand the test of time. Nigeria was peaceful until a man who wants to rule by all means for the quest for power brought the insurgency into the country, and he was given chance to rule, and he was at the good eight years, taking the country backwards where the country experienced what happened in A.D. 1536, which is the worst time in human history. Actually, they prayed yesterday, but prayers without good work is dead. What Nigeria wants is a good, is good work. Chinese are not praying, but they're doing the right thing. Prince Iotech, thank you for your message. Um, I also have yours, um, Mrs. Ejiro Omokaro, Omokaro. Well, he just says, send me handshake. I shake you back, too. Good morning to you. Uh, Duru, Martin Zuru, a.k.a. Mayor from Ikotu Egbe, you said, uh, good morning. I just want to congratulate all Nigerians for having one of the best governments since the history of Nigeria. APC, Abe, Kari, Degu. In fact, light is now 100% stable. Even poverty has disappeared in the land. Security, fantastic. Our health care superb. Uh, one knew very well i knew very well that jagaban have the answers for nigeria's problems chartered accountant by profession best student in chicago university first class honor oh my god our president is a hero that is why his name should be in the guinness book of records you took time to write this message thank you very much god bless you i cannot shout good morning Good morning, madam. Morning, sir. How are you? What's your name? Where are you calling well, from? Well done, My name is Victor Otebode. All right. Where are you How calling from? How was your night, ma? I was sleeping, but I'm sure it was fine. <laughs> I just want you to please listen to the voice of the masses mm. by banning Peter of sea for peace. Please. <laughs> please. If you drop the graph, but the man talked this morning. He said that food table. prices has gone up very high, and he's begging the president on behalf of everybody. If you What's, listen to all mm, the VOP, what he's saying is not palatable to you, presenters, or those who are invited to be your guests. Okay, I hear you. I he please, has one more. He has one more chance. Please. No problem. He has one more chance. Don't worry. But he didn't do anything bad this morning. Uh, you know he didn't do anything bad this morning. Don't worry. One more oh, chance. All right, thank you. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Thank you. You people don't worry about Osifo. When he's with me, he's like, it will be good. Don't worry. Today he begged on behalf of everybody now. He said food too dead. Was that not what he said? I be food cheap for where you day. Everybody calm down, you know. Oh my, oh my people, calm down. Don't worry, he'll be fine. Hello, good morning. How are you? Hello. Good morning, Cody. I'm fine. Morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay. My name is Daniel, and I'm calling from Ibim. Ah, thank God. I thought you wanted to say from the lion's den. My heart was now beating. <laughs> 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 
Oh, because then, uh, well, uh, you know, since you have started, after Mary left, you you came in, I have not called, I'm a regular caller, but I will just want to use this time to welcome you. You are Thank welcome, you. you are good, we love you, just like we love uh, Mary. You are, you are, in fact, you know what you are doing, so we appreciate Thank you. somebody like you coming to this step. Yeah. Uh, okay, please, people should not kill those people. This morning, he didn't say anything right. In fact, I was even expecting something. But he said something very, very good because you have to be alive before the, the, before you talk about who. Even the <laughs> so man that, no say food, dear. Even say food, no say it, dear. <laughs> Cordelia, oh, honestly, yes. it, 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 it is becoming unbearable. Cordelia, I used to buy one TikTok biscuit for my children. I used to buy that biscuit for 2000 200. Yesterday, I bought it for uh, 6,800. Hey, give me their number. Let me help you beg them to change Biscuito. Ha! Honestly, it's, 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 it's something else. It's unbearable. Seriously, they should do something. They should do something. Just like uh, this guy called Ben complained. Look at DSTV. You, you can't, please, uh, it, I don't know. It's because of our government. Honestly, if we have a government that is working, these things will not be like this. Now they are trying to persecute Onyema because he came down, you know, bring him down the price. Honestly, he, the government should do something because it is not easy for anybody in Nigeria. In fact, there is no even no rich person now, mm. no poor person. Everybody is complaining. Honestly, all right. I want to just wake up. Thank you for your. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And talking about Alan Oyema and Air Peace, I mentioned earlier. Let's say it again. From about nine thirty upward, we'll be having Sydney Foster. Uh, she will join us, and we'll be looking at the issue of the choking of in quotes, choking of airpiece by the international airlines, how they're trying to pull down that route, and uh, that is the airpiece flying on that route. So you join us, and that's going to be from about 9.30 upwards. We'll be having Sydney Foster join us. She'll be joining us from the UK. She is uh, an analyst, and she works, consults for airpiece, and she'll share with us firsthand what's up and how uh, things will go. Frank O'Nero from the U.S., I got your message. You say the carelessness of drivers in the high and the high level of bad roads in Nigeria leads to unnecessary death of citizens. Drivers must be made to undergo adequate training before being issued driver's license in Nigeria. FRC and the police also need to wake up to their responsibilities. May God help and heal our land. Amen to that. I also have you here. Um, Olua Femi David, Nigerian politicians always have messages for the followers and they never have one for themselves. Good morning to you, Adaku from Igondo. Electricity tariff has been increased already last month. They gave us light bill of, uh, how much is this? Is this 2,182 or, or 21,000? I really don't. Okay, 2,182 Naira yesterday. You now receive the bill of 8,462 Naira. It is well, also you, you're seeing the difference in price there. All right, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Madam Cordelia. Morning, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Hunter. I look at you. Right. Okay, I dash your name to another person before. Sorry, Jerry. Carry on. Uh -huh. So, no, I'll not be you the paper. You know, go pepper you. Amen. Uh -huh. So, waiting at the talk, what I'm saying is that we are talking about food uh, stock in the market, the high cost of food stock. Yes, food have to be cut because federal government have not done what they're supposed to do by bringing the price of fuel and the other things. Why wouldn't food be cut? So sometimes I don't blame those that are telling me it because they suffer to get it. They suffer and struggle to get it. No farmer again. No farmer are not going to the farm again. So how are we going to school? And we are shouting this in every day as if our government are not hearing us. But I believe, I know that they are hearing us, but it's just because they are, they are not into our system. Their own system is quality system. Our system is low quality, low system. So let Mr. President do the next thing. All right. We are shouting every day. Let them know that we are exactly. human beings. Then, in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, there are two soldiers there. Let them, let them, let Mr. President with all those soldiers. Mm. So that those people will sleep well. Please, because 
I'm begging. Madden, man, the canoe, they are sitting here, turning, 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 turning. Let them leave that man alone. Let them leave that man alone. I'm begging the federal government. I'm begging. Please. Okay, thank I you. Pepper them. Time up. Okay, I'll quickly read the last two messages for today. Good morning. Harriet Ogada from Palm Grove. Nigeria is under siege in our own country. APC. Um, by APC. Oh, Lord, save your own. No more suffering and smiling. Thank you, Harry. And uh, I have your share or sign up from Olodia Papa. Unfortunately, your panelists didn't have enough time to shine light on the reason why the DSS is preventing Mazi Namdekano's lawyers' access to him. I'm still confused writing words pretending that what is happening to MNK is normal. His Lagos boys should advise Tinubu to understand that anything that happens to MNK moving forward, Tinubu is 100% responsible. All right, that's from Ostino. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for your calls. And I'll remind you that all things being equal, we'll be joining Cindy Foster as we'll be looking at the airpiece issue that will be from around 9.30 upwards. Do we have time for one more? Okay, welcome all. Sit down. Follow me answer this call. Hello, good morning. You'll be the last call morning, for this name. segment. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning. My name is Ifani from Ikodu. All right, Ifani, for you, I have just 30 seconds. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what I want to say is that about the uh, uh, hike in the uh, product, in the things in the market, uh, number one, one thing I want to say, I advise the government is they try to reduce the taxes. Mm. Now, some that are important things to Nigeria, the taxes are high. So the little one they brought, they will try to add more money. They should try to reduce taxes so that things in the market can reduce and also help us in the fuel issue. Because all these things are the reason why things are going high. Dollars are they are saying that dollar is coming down. But my own, I'm not seeing dollar. Dollar should come down to 300, 400. That is when I believe that dollar has come down. Right, and the second is about the APs. Uh, okay, because you know, uh, hold on. Oh, you see this one about APs. I need you to uh, mm -hmm. call me back. You know, we will have the interview. After the interview, we will okay. also talk about the airpiece issue. So okay, join me okay, from okay. 9.30. Okay, thank you. Don't miss it, right? Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Okay. I have to leave now. I'm Cordelia Obe. Thank you for listening. Thank you for calling. Thank you for spending your time with me. And my gang well guys are already... Otutu Oma, Cordelia. Otutu Oma. Ndei, Ever. Where are Everything rare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm not happy. You can see that hey. Namikano's lawyer, uh, they are really complaining that DSS yeah. is not allowing them access to the mm. document. And I but wonder so, why. But somebody that was uh, sentenced to seven years imprisonment was released the other day. My sister, I think of Wadume Sote. I saw Voldrum. I called him Wadume. For, for, hey, I didn't know. Seriously? Her. Why? Why are you frustrated him? I really can't explain what is going on because is if you don't handle things properly, it will now look as if is a, a deliberate thing. Exactly, he's targeted as some set of people. You understand? Yeah. But in fact, they say we should pray, Abi. Mm, and I told to them, pray. I told them there are different types of prayers. Pray for your leaders. We can pray either Father bless them, Father show them how to go, Father this and that, and there is also. The in the bush keep prayer. Die by fire. Die by fire. Die by fire. They never know say prayer they different. Mm. They never know. Mm. Especially when yellow man call at the voice. Oh. Mm. In the in the bush keep brother. You would have asked me to prophesy. I beg, I beg. Kodelia, do you want me to go deeper? I not go anywhere. <laughs> not go. I no want go, to no leave go. this. I want to leave this studio in peace. I know <laughs> enter door. I'll see one man wearing black and red. Uh, you will go for your transport. <laughs> because right now, right now, I want to quickly get to London I, before I go. To to London. Before, before you go to London. No, 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 no. The last one was London. <laughs> he went London. After it London, and I had Ipley. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Take care. I'll see you. I, I leave you in very good hands. I'll be back by 9.30, and we're going to be talking air peace. Take care. VOP 903. 90.3. I wanted to call my old station. Uh, bye. <laughs>